Okay, and we're recording. So, <laughs> hello Tess, welcome. Hi. Thank you for participating in our Meet the Artist interview series. Um, who's your furry friend? This is Luna, she likes to steal my thunder. Luna, okay. Um, so, how old were you when you started taking ballet? I was about three and a half. Um, my mom had started taking adult ballet classes, which she um, had always wanted to do. And I wanted to do whatever she did. So I followed her to ballet class. Um, she got bored with it pretty quickly and I stuck it out. So you said you were three and a half. Yeah. So what, how old were you when you knew like this was what you wanted to do, you know? for a life, um, for a career? I think I started getting serious. It sounds crazy, but I think I started getting serious about it around seven. Um, I think that's when it started to become training and not just a thing that I did. Right. Um, and maybe around 12, at my studio, at around 12, we would have like conferences mid-year meetings with our teacher mm -hmm. and at around 12 she asked me if I wanted to pursue dance professionally and I said yes and so then I was like on that track. So did the teachers at your school were they able to help sort of help help you navigate that process that transition from student to finding a professional job how did that work? My school, was, it was part of a fest conference group, I guess. Um, it's called Regional Dance America. Yeah. And it, it was, then it was um, regional. So we were the Pacific region. There are many other regions. I think they've since left that. But um, I, it was a chance for lots of different schools, pre-professional schools to meet, have a conference, take class from other teachers, and um, get scholarships to summer programs. So a lot of company directors would come to that as well. So my first job was with Sacramento Ballet, and the director at the time, Ron Cunningham, had a pretty close relationship with my school. We did one of his pieces when I was, a few times, but I was in it when I was 16 or 17, called The Incident at Blackbriar. Um, and then he saw me at festival a few years later, or maybe just a year later, um, and offered me a traineeship when I graduated high school. Nice. So that really did like work for you, that whole, the system that it was designed for actually worked. That's awesome. It did. So it seems, oh, it's great you mentioned Sacramento Valley. So you grew up in Torrance, California, right? Mm -hmm. And your school, South Bay Ballet, is in Torrance or yeah. Torrance area. Yeah. And then you went to Sacramento. And then according to your bio, to California Ballet, which is in San Diego, mm -hmm. and now Sneon. Yep. So your whole career has been in California. That's right, yeah. Which I love. I think that's so great. <laughs> Just goes to show how big a state it is. Lots <laughs> of opportunities, north and south. Yeah, I never expected to be in California for so long. Um, I love it. I think it's great, but I ballet jobs. There are so few companies throughout the country. I was totally prepared to go wherever I could get a job. Um, it just so happened that all the companies I've worked for are in California. <laughs> That's great. Um, so I know you did compete at the international ballet competition. I didn't okay. compete, you didn't actually. Compete. I performed. You performed, okay. So what is the difference? So f through festival, um, so the International Ballet Competition in Jackson mm -hmm. was every four years. And through festival, we, the whole region did like a collaborative piece. So they sent their like, like two, two or, three dancers from each school. Um, I think, I can't remember now, it was so long ago, a few days early um, to the festival. And Robert Kelly, who 
was the director of Santa Cruz Ballet Theater. He probably still is. Also um, in California. <laughs> also in California. Um, he choreographed a piece on us that was very cool. It was to uh, just a jazz vocalist singing Summertime. Nice. Um, so we had like no counts. The lyrics were always different. <laughs> um, and it was like, it was like eight couples and then eight women. So, but a lot of it was unison. So it was a really good exercise and just like watching each other and dancing as a group. Um, do you wish you'd competed? Or had, like, do you wish you'd pursued competition at all? Or are you good with no. just, okay. <laughs> It always seems so different, but I have friends who've uh, done competitions and really love them. And I know people who do them speak generally really highly of the experience, but I think a lot depends on personality. Yeah, I, at the time I didn't have many issues with nerves or anything but I hadn't done many competitions. I did one local competition um, when I was a teenager. The IBC was so big, it's an international competition. I could imagine getting really overwhelmed, especially like my favorite part of dancing or one of my favorite parts of dancing and performing is that camaraderie, especially backstage. And right. I guess I don't know, cause I haven't done many, but I can't imagine that you would have that same sense if you were competing against each other. So going back to your California career, starting Sacramento to California Ballet to Sneeland, do you feel like those jobs have built on each other, sort of? Like, are you glad you started as an apprentice somewhere? Did that serve a, like a beneficial purpose? And then has each company provided, you know, a different... Absolutely. Um, Sacramento Ballet coming in, I think I was the youngest dancer at 18. Um, I had been very, I had, I grew up in the same studio my whole life. So I was very comfortable at home with my training. Um, so Sacramento, because I had already knew Ron, it wasn't a huge shock, but it was still quite a big difference. My ballet teacher had always told me that when you become a professional, you don't get corrections anymore. You keep, you're the person at the front of the room is not your teacher any longer. They're not investing in your overall growth. They're just, they're trying to put on a production. Um, and that, thankfully that wasn't really true in Sacramento. Um, Ron and his wife, Corrine really did invest in us and they were really tough on us, but it was they they it was an amazing company to join because they had a lot of different dancers. It was kind of similar to Sneelan, where nobody looked the same, nobody had the same skill set. They weren't trying to build a corps de ballet that was identical. They took, but they managed to take all these different dancers and personalities and body types and make a really cohesive, wonderful show. Um, and we did a lot of classical work when I was there as well. So How yeah. long were you there as an apprentice? I was there for two years. Two years. Um, but I struggled with a lot of injuries while I was there. My last year in high school, I um, had an injury and then it kind of kept coming back. I, so I wound up leaving Sacramento Valley because of that. I was injured like three times with, over the course of my time there. And it was the same injury every time. It was a different feet, but same injury. Um, and so I wound up having surgery and then, and like going home to recuperate and thinking that I wasn't going to dance that year. Um, but I had one of my friends from Sacramento Ballet had moved to San Diego the year before and started dancing for a California Ballet. So I called them and asked if they needed any, anybody, if I could just like do Nutcracker with them. Um, and they said, and they needed, they needed somebody for Swan Lake, actually. Hmm. Um, so I was able to do, I was able to retrain a lot there. And it was, 
it was really, it was a very different environment. Um, a lot of the people at Cal, a lot of the dancers at California Ballet were there because they loved dancing. And we all had other things that we were working on as well. Um, whereas at Sacramento Ballet, everyone was there for Sacramento Ballet. We all spent time with each other. We didn't really have time for anything outside of work. And at California Ballet, we did have time. We had a shorter rehearsal day, fewer productions each year. And so everybody was focusing on different things in addition to our, our performing. Um, so it gave me the time to, and the attention actually, to retrain my body, um, get some roles that I wouldn't have had elsewhere and learn how to manage and handle those roles. Both companies or all three companies, the community between the dancers has been really good. And I've learned that that's something that's really important to me. I don't, I don't want to be in an environment that's not supportive and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> all three companies have been really, really great in that way. That's good. So I know you have been teaching in our online class program at SMUN, and I know you also teach elsewhere. When did you start teaching? And now I'm also interested to know, having had to do all that retraining with your injury, how does that influence your teaching? Um, so I started teaching, I, I assisted class, like beginning level classes as a student. Okay. Um, but I don't really count that as teaching. Um, I had like a rough idea of how to train children from that, I guess. Like what, like how to give a, a broad correction that would trickle down and fix some other things. Um, but I really started teaching when I joined California Ballet because I had time. Um, and actually, I think that me retraining and teaching go hand in hand. I found that once I started teaching, I was teaching mostly younger kids then. So like from three years old to, to like 17, 18. And then I taught an adult class once a week as well. Um, but I found that teaching really made me evaluate my training in a different light. I had to figure out, like almost go backwards and pick apart things that I knew were correct and figure out why they were correct or how to think about them in different ways. Because a huge part for me as a dancer, or like a huge part of my dancing experience has been that somebody can tell you the same thing over and over again and it just doesn't click. Like they're not wrong, you do need to fix it. <laughs> but the way that they're saying it, you're like, I am fixing it. I'm doing what you're telling me to do. Yeah. Why isn't it what you're asking for? Because <laughs> you know, that disconnect is, I think is really common. Um, and so in my training, I, when I was a, as a dancer, I try to think, I try to figure out what the, if I'm just getting a correction, I try to figure out what the root of that correction is. Um, like sometimes it's purely aesthetic, but sometimes it's something fundamental placement issue. Um, and so figuring that out with my students as well and how to say, I'll say some pretty ridiculous things probably when I'm teaching. Yeah, it is interesting how different teachers can say the same thing, but in different ways. And depending on who you are, you're going to hear one and not the other. And it's so fascinating. Yeah. For sure. Sometimes it just clicks. And sometimes you've heard it over and over, and then it takes a different person to say literally the exact same thing to you. And then it clicks. <laughs> Is there a teacher you had who you try to sort of, like, who was really influential for you, who you would love to be for another student? 
Yes, I had a teacher, her name is Alicia Head. She um, has her own studio now in Long Beach. Um, she taught us ballet, Pilates and gyrotonic. And she has a very, because of that, she had a really anatomical approach to ballet and it was super um, picky. <laughs> <laughs> super detail oriented and I'll still um I haven't been back in a while but I, as a professional I've gone back and like had a couple of classes with her just to address those little picky things um in my technique because at least for my body if I just try to make the picture that make the shape that I'm supposed to make it's not always going to work or be or work consistently if I'm not actually using the like internally doing it properly. Um, so she's, yeah, she's my favorite. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've gotten like more nervous, sort of, or you were saying that back and when you were a teenager, you didn't have a lot of nerves, but now potentially more so. <laughs> <laughs> but are there good things that you feel you've gotten from ballet? Oh, like yeah. I actually, it's interesting. I wasn't nervous as a, when I was younger. It wasn't until I went to California Ballet that I started struggling with nerves. Hmm. And I don't really get nervous anymore. Um, I decided to, like, trick my brain when I was with California Ballet because I was really struggling, actually, with, like, stage fright and it was weird that I had never struggled with it before so I decided that I was going to tell myself that that nervous energy was just excitement and I was just excited to go on stage and that has worked my one of my um our trainer also suggested that I visualize a performance twice before I do it oh. so visualize it once as myself um, like from my point of view, looking out into the audience or looking into the wings and then visualize it once as the audience watching myself dance. And he was like, by then you've already done it twice. <laughs> Be calm. And both of those skills worked, um, for me. So speaking of that, I don't really want to like dwell on the pandemic, but things have had to adapt especially mm -hmm. in the arts. So are there things that you've seen change that you think are really good and want to see continue? Or are there things that you haven't seen change yet, but hope change? I mean, I think that for a long time, ballet has been, I mean, ballet is inherently a little elitist. And I think by not being able to have an audience and not being able to perform in a theater, we're able to make, hopefully, we're able to make dance more accessible. Um, I've met people who have no idea what ballet is and deaf or who don't think ballet is anything beyond three or five year old girls in pink tutus stretching. Um, and so I think it would be great if we can find a way to make our art form more accessible to a, a broader audience. Maybe people who wouldn't normally think that they would like ballet. I think there are a number of people, especially with more contemporary works, who th they think of ballet as Swan Lake or the Nutcracker and, and they don't, like those are beautiful, but they don't think that that's their thing. And then they see a mixed bill, somebody drags them to a mixed bill and they're like, oh, actually I can get into this. This is pretty cool. This isn't what I thought it was. Cause it's so hard to describe contemporary work to people because it's not a story ballet. Um, I also think it'd be really cool if we can start to, or not start to, but do more collaborating with other artists, visual artists or musicians. Um, so slightly speaking of pivoting, pivoting from dance, so I feel like you have two key hobbies, I could be wrong, plants and sewing. Yeah, that'd be right. Correct? Okay. <laughs> so is the plant, did either of those start when you were in San Diego and had extra time? Both. Well, 
Okay. Not so much. Plants are mostly a San Francisco thing because the apartment I found here gets amazing light. <laughs> And my apartment in San Diego got barely any. Um, actually, that's not true. I had a good outdoor veggie garden in San Diego. Um, here, it's just my indoor jungle. And then the sewing, I actually started, I learned to sew as a child. Um, but I didn't really start sewing for myself until San Diego. I, the last time I was injured was very upsetting it was one week before our show oh. we were doing like in studio run throughs and so I awful. Knew, yeah I knew what it was so I think I only wound up taking well I was in a boot for three weeks and then I had I took a little bit more time off to recover um, I was very upset so understandably I decided to I don't know why I, I, I decided to try making my own leotards and um, the first few were pretty weird. <laughs> um, they got better <laughs> and I did that. I would just make them for myself, for my friends for a while. And then a few years later, we had a dancer choreograph show. And then I started making YGP costumes, which I loved because they could be so crazy, um, like decorating a tutu, or I made um, a bayadere, the like two piece oh, mm -hmm. red cost, like skirt and crop top costume. I made that and I wanted to keep it after. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, and now I sew everything. I just made jean shorts. Last question. Do you have either, you can pick, a favorite ballet related thing, like ballet you've danced or costume you've worn or choreographer you've worked with or a dream ballet to dance, choreographer to work with, et cetera? That's a very good question. I'm just having a hard time picking one. <laughs> you can do multiple. I guess in the future, well, okay. In my recent career doing, actually my whole career, cause I learned a different trade piece. Doing blue until June was like one of the best experiences I've had. Um, that was a very emotional, very like, very intense role for me and very, counter to my personality um because my my person was pretty aggressive and angry <laughs> um but it was really fun it was very rewarding and i actually i learned trade second before the ground when i was in sacramento valley too and i remember loving i just would just like do it in the corner with my partner because we were just under studies but i remember loving that piece so I'm gonna say just about any tray piece would be pretty fun. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Lovely. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wraps things up. Thank you, Tess. Bye.